The Bushfire Royal Commission's findings are shaping up to be a key political battleground in the lead up to the state election. Among the most controversial recommendation is the replacement of single wire power lines across the state and putting some underground. While the government says the plan is far too expensive, the opposition argues the government has exaggerated the cost of implementation. Black Saturday's most devastating blaze was started by a faulty power line at Kilmore East. This week, the man who came close to putting it out spoke for the first time to Lisa Maximovic. It is something, but I know that we did the best we could, and I know that our local fire brigade, our volunteers, our neighbours, we all put absolutely everything into that fire to try and contain it, and uh, it was just too much. We had a car we were restoring out the front here, and uh, on the day, it was such a bad day, and we knew the forecast, we uh, were continually looking at the sky and uh, we saw the smoke start on that green hill just over there. Noel Baker and his neighbours fought the blaze and nearly had it under control but the wind fanned it towards the nearby plantation. Once it took hold there was no stopping it. The former CFA lieutenant had to turn back to try to save his own home and business. Days later, he learned that the fire he'd almost contained went on to kill 119 people. When I learnt the extent of it, where it got into other more timbered places, and uh, I, you know, it's hard to imagine the, the horrendous situation that people faced. It was just devastating to learn of it. It's now clear that the deadly Kilmore blaze was sparked by a poorly maintained power line which came down in winds of up to 100 kilometres an hour. More than 700 people are taking their anger out against the power company, SPI Electricity, formerly SP Osnet. They've joined a class action seeking damages for loss of life and property and ongoing trauma. This was an entirely avoidable tragedy. The line was more than 40 years old. It was stretched for more than a kilometre. There's no vibration damper. It's only inspected every three years, sorry, every five years. And um, it, it, what's inspected then is primarily the poles. So it was an accident waiting to happen. The action has the potential to award damages in the hundreds of millions. And it could lead to further litigation if the electricity company claims government departments and emergency services were also to blame for failure to reduce fuel and failure to warn people about the fire. There's been a formal indication that by SPI that they will join third parties um, and we anticipate they may seek to join the CFA uh, or Utility Asset Management which is the maintenance provider. During the Royal Commission's hearings power lines became one of the most contentious issues. In their final report, the commissioners recommended the progressive replacement of all single wire earth return power lines with aerial bundled cable, underground cabling or other technology that delivers greatly reduced bushfire risk. Associate Professor Trevor Blackburn gave evidence about two of the fires started by power lines. He supports the replacement of single overhead lines and says priority should be given to high risk fire areas. The problem, of course, is that there, there are 60,000 kilometres of uh, overhead line conductors in Victoria and 30,000 kilometres of uh, single wire earth return overhead lines and so it, it's really uh, not a viable option to replace all of that. It really has to be done on a, uh, on a risk assessment basis. Last week, the state government put its own spin on the Royal Commission's findings, suggesting that it was far too expensive to put all cables underground. The difficulty we had with the Royal Commission's recommendation is that they recommend that all, each and every one, of the SWER and the 22K uh, KB lines be uh, undergrounded over time, either in the high-risk areas within 10 years or at the end of their uh, rep life and the, the replacement stage subsequently and that's a very huge task. The Commission didn't say that. 
The Commission said that over a 10 year period work should be done to upgrade power lines using a variety of technologies. It should be a full uh, commitment to that recommendation, not just uh, a couple of million dollars for some research. The government says it will legislate to strengthen the obligations of energy companies and a new industry panel called the Powerline Bushfire Safety Task Force will provide its own suggestions to the government by June next year. But going underground doesn't seem to be in the equation. There are three major causes of fire in Victoria. Um, first is lightning strikes, um, second is power lines and the third is arson. Um, and as I said before, the, the, uh, the, the simple unambiguous fact is you could have every single power line in Victoria underground and you'll still get fires. There's arguments as to whether you should or you shouldn't. What I, all I can say about that on behalf of the victims is, is when you're considering whether to do it or not, um, think about the real cost of these sorts of disasters. 120 people killed. Uh, and billions of dollars of damage. Lisa Ximivic with that report. A quarter of a million Chinese 